It's been a minute. <laughs> Why? Why do you laugh at everything I say? I don't know. It's the way you see it. You have this look on your face. But anyway, this is, guys, dad's <laughs> not dad's here. still on sabbatical. <laughs> yeah, but he'll be back. He'll be back next week, khalas, for sure. The last episode we filmed, I know last time I said I'd release it, but I don't like it. I don't, you know why? Not because we said anything wrong or anything like that. I stand by everything we said, but he was beyond exhausted and I was beyond exhausted and we were having two different conversations. So watching the video, I was like, no, this is stupid. (laughs) I was there. Yeah, yeah. You could clearly tell I was saying something and he was saying something else and I'm like, no, dad, we're missing each other. And then he he went, he, he is a tourist. He just went bull like heads on you know what i mean and i just watched it and i was like no we look like dumb and dumber tweedledee and tweedledum like it's stupid you know what i love even though like the conversation went like south <laughs> north and south <laughs> you said some pretty good things i mean listen maybe i need to take a look at it again because i watched it when i was in jordan and honestly i was just exhausted i, I don't think your opinion's gonna change your- I'll, I'll give it another chance but another anyway go. we're back <laughs> We're this back. This is Conversations with My Conscience, episode something. Girl edition. I need to start coming up with seasons, right? Like, should I? Seasons, yeah, definitely. Seasons. Okay. Anyway, we're back. We're back. We're back, definitely. But honestly, it's really cute. I had a lot of the followers DM, like, when, when are you filming another episode? Like, we missed the full episode. So well, that was nice. I have a question, actually. I mean, you've obviously you've been away you've traveled yeah and i think it's the first time you've traveled since your podcast really blew up and your social yeah and i've been out with you a couple of times where people have recognized you and come up to you but how does it feel now because honestly i you did mention quite a few times yeah that there's fans out there and that's so beautiful but like how do you feel like how what is that like Honestly, I'd be lying if I said my ego wasn't flattered, obviously. Especially as women, I always say we have to have a little bit of narcissism, just narcissism, excuse me, just in order to survive. But um, interestingly enough, it was in Jordan that I was recognized the most and everyone was beyond nice. It actually felt amazing just because the way people, the women, especially women came up to me, the way they approached me was really sweet. They, You could tell that they really watch the content. You could tell that it really helps them. And most of them, without fail, almost have the same response of, you put into words what I am unable to put into words. So it's something I feel or thoughts that I have, but I just don't know how to make a coherent sentence out of it. And you do that for me. And that, to me, was everything. They were really sweet. I take my time. Like Whenever they come up, you can tell they're a little a little nervous, a little shy. And they're just like, I love you, I love your videos. And uh, and they like try to like skim through it. And I'm always like, no, thank you for coming up. What's your name? I like take the time. Um, it's lovely. It's lovely. And a lot of them didn't come up to me and DM'd me afterwards. I saw you at this place or that place. And every time I'm like, yo, come up and say hi. Like, Is I'm, it mostly guys or girls that don't come up to you? <laughs> Controversy. Birth. B- birth. <laughs> I'm so tired. I haven't slept. Both. <laughs> Okay, I'm so tired. I haven't slept. Both, both, both. That's honestly, alhamdulillah, they, um, it was really humbling. It was the most humbling experience. I will say one thing, though. Some people pulled out their phones and started filming me when I was sitting having lunch with my mama. And that was weird. That was weird, yo. I've seen that before. Yo, that was weird. I, I have seen that before. It like, is weird. Don't do that. Just come up and say <laughs> hi. Like, I'm eating a meal feuille, which crumbles. You know what I mean? And I'm like halfway through my bite. And I just see behind my mom. <laughs> like a phone and I'm like that's I literally told my mom I'm like can you scoot a little because someone's filming me it was very weird it's so cr- honestly it's, it's weird it's so crazy yeah but when I tell like other people who have a following and have been in the public eye for a while and that happens to them more often than not they just like shrug and they're like get used to it bro and I'm just like <laughs> what do you mean how am I supposed to get used to that? It's crazy. It's very odd. And it's wild. Like, what? You're almost 400,000. So. Yeah. It's strange. It's a big number, but it also doesn't feel like a big number. I don't know. It's so weird. I remember when, like, 10K was like, if only 10,000 people are listening, I'm happy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wild. Well, it's good to be back, man. Yeah. It's really, really good to be back. I feel like I'm in a fever dream, but yeah. Fever dream. Yeah. Okay, you know what? 
we did have a couple of questions from last time. <sighs> <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, like I think the first one is. This is this is gonna this is gonna. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna actually answer this, like genuinely. Is it gonna ruffle some feathers, or is it? Yeah, actually, it is. I think your response will ruffle some feathers. Wait, before you answer, I wanted to tell you, yesterday I was going through my DMs because you know I like yeah. to go through the nice ones and like answer people and get to know That's them beautiful. whatever. One of the DMs addressed when we talked about online dating. And uh, she like really liked what we said, which I appreciate because I felt like I didn't answer that. Anyway. It was it was interesting that a lot a lot of people resonated. She wasn't the only one, but they were literally like you you said what I was thinking, you know. And one girl was saying, "My friend's going through that, and you're right. I kind of just have to let her figure it out," which is nice. I believe in the power of planting a seed. But anyway, go for it. I I love that. Um, the other day I was actually last week I was out uh, for a friend's birthday. You mm-hmm. know her, yeah. And one of the girls we know, uh, she's single. Mm-hmm. And she mentioned, actually, she mentioned exactly word from word. This is the longest time I've ever been single in my life. Okay. So she's, I don't want to say that kind of type, excuse me. That's not what I mean. But most of her life, she's been in a relationship. Let's okay. just say at, at that. So she was actually considering, I don't know if she was considering or she's actually right now exploring online dating. Okay. So she asked me, what do you think about it? To be fair, I don't, I I told her truthfully, I was like, look, you know, I think that all women should deserve for a man to come up to them and like, you know, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, I, I told her, I don't like the idea of a girl meeting a guy or a guy meeting a girl knowing that the intention really wasn't to meet a specific person and knowing the fact that there's two people behind a phone swiping left and right looking at hundreds of people yeah. for me it's just that's not the way i would it's want inhumane. it's like a cattle auction it's inhumane i don't know if it's inhumane it's just a you don't know the person's intention behind I the phone i think it's inhumane because really? i think it, yeah i think it it diminishes your entirety. As your an worth. Entire, no, not just your worth, your entirety. Like mm. your uh, your experiences, your worth, your your family, your religion, your spirituality, your everything down to a swipe of left and right. It rubs me the wrong way. It irks me. Because how can you even contain all that you are in a bio? <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest, exposing a bit in here... Um, I've never had a boyfriend or relationship from online dating. Have I explored some of the apps? Everyone's downloaded the I've, app. At I've one done point it. Yeah, other. absolutely. Have Out I of gone curiosity. on dates? I get you. I get yeah. you. Yeah. Have I gone on it. dates? Absolutely. Has anything materialized out of it or yeah. like, you know, was no. no, absolutely not. But I think for me, it's I don't want to say it's important. Let's go through it. Go and explore it for yourself. But that's something beautiful you said is you'll get there on your own, right? Yeah, yeah I think once you recognize that, how do I say this? It's really the most pointless thing to try to take your nasib in your own hands, to try to play God, you know what I mean? And to try to, especially when it comes to romantic relationships and partners, whether you like to see it, whether you choose to believe it or not, it is entirely out of your hands. What is in your hands Mm -hmm. is the person that approaches you, it's up to you to vet them and to truly see if they're worth your time and your effort or not. Again, this applies to both men and women. You can't go around like, what are you going to do? Go out in the streets with binoculars and try to find your partner? It's not going to happen. You have to focus on being the best version of yourself. You have to focus on feeding your soul, as cliche as it sounds, filling your own cup. And then when the person comes along, you have maybe enough self-respect, self-awareness, and self-love to recognize if that is a divine gift or not. So that is the only job you have when it comes to your divine partner. You, that's it. It's not up to you to go pick it and choose it. Just the, there are some things you need to leave to Allah. And, and like I said before, when it comes to me, this is especially one thing that I will absolutely leave to Allah because I am not... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not the one to pick. You know what I mean? If it, if it's between my choice and God's, a thousand percent, I'll I'll take God's choice. It's interesting that you say that. Um, obviously, we we have quite a few friends in common, and a lot of our friends are single, right? Yeah. And with the intention, and with a really good intention of finding the right man, marrying, I having you're kids. Talking about no, we have a lot. I'm I not, know, but I, I, <laughs> there's one person that comes to mind. So, on to what you were just saying is that is it wrong? Not wrong is. Should women put themselves out there? I feel like that's a double-edged sword, double-edged question. Because what is putting yourself out there? Some people will tell you putting yourself out there is going to the club and shaking my booty on a table all night. That's putting yourself out there in a sense. I'm beyond entirely against that. What is putting yourself out there? Like I said, putting yourself out there is... Completely investing in yourself in the healthiest way possible. Because a lot of people will tell you being a boss ass bee is investing in myself. But you almost develop this hard shell around yourself that's hard enough not only for a potential partner to crack. Eventually you're not even aware where you're, where you start and you end. So that's just chaos. But to put yourself out there, yeah, absolutely you should put yourself out there just in, in a humane, loving, respectful sense. You should invest in your job you should invest in your health you should invest in your healthy friendships you should uh, in activities you know that feed your soul so it goes back to my point before you should do everything you possibly can to better yourself and make yourself a beautiful loving kind self-sufficient version of yourself that's putting yourself out there but if putting yourself out there is drugs or bad company or 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 alcohol or there are so many ways to put yourself out there you know what i mean but yeah you should put yourself out there love that thank you for clarifying yeah but again the intention isn't i'm putting myself out there because i'm looking for someone to find me the intention is i'm putting myself out there because i want to experience the best that life has to offer the best that god has to bestow upon me the best of why i was even put on this earth within the limits of my religious beliefs my spirituality my moral compass and my ethics this is where the line is drawn and then by the grace of God, when you're filling your own cup through his love and his kindness and his mercy, a person who is on the same frequency will come along. And like I said, you might just maybe have enough self-awareness to recognize it or to recognize that's another test and I need to walk away, which we talked about before. So that's important. I think I was actually thinking about this today. This is important. Let me see if I can phrase this properly. Ah, I was thinking, I don't know why I was thinking about this today. <sighs> a lot of people keep repeating the same mistakes without even recognizing that it's the same mistake. How many times have you heard, I've gone above and beyond for him. I've done everything for her and still they screwed me over or still they didn't pick me, right? And people have this, this weird notion and I don't know where it came from. I think it came from movies of... I'm just going to be selfless and I'm going to love them so much and I'm going to be empathetic and self-sacrifice and, you know, and, and, and still they didn't pick me and it's victim blaming here. And absolutely not victim blaming. Sorry. It's, it's, um, self victimizing. Right. But the thing is, it's not really love. That's not love. Again, I've said this before. You trick yourself into thinking that it's empathy and it's, you're such a good kind of soul and heart that you've done this for this person but that's just that's honestly i'm sorry rubbish 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 you guys need to snap out of it because then they abandon you and then you're like oh my god what did i do the thing is you didn't really love yourself because if you actually loved yourself you wouldn't degrade yourself to the point of basically begging someone to so much as give you a sideways glance and then they end up throwing you like trash the worst part is is you go and do it again either with the same person and you're stuck in there for years or you go and do it again with the next person that comes along and again you're tricking yourself it's that everyone else is wrong they're just heartless and heathens and i'm just so kind one day god will send me someone good you know, that's actually interesting you say that. I, I fully agree with you, by the way. But always when we're around girls or our girlfriends, or we even meet new people, by the way, that we don't even know, but sometimes we get into deep convos with them, right? Yeah. Is that one-sided delusion, right? <laughs> always. Oh, and it's just like, it's delusion. 
you know, most of the stories recently, honestly, pay attention, pay attention to stories you've been through or stories people approach you with. It's a lot of someone is so evil and someone is so good. It's a lot of I was so amazing to them. And they just didn't appreciate me and just like threw me to the side, to the curb. I don't trust these stories anymore. When I was younger, I used to think like, yeah, you know, I can see how loving and kind you are. But at, at what point does it become? It's not that I'm loving and kind. It's almost that I'm enjoying putting myself through this torture because there is a lacking inside of me that hasn't been healed yet. Honestly, I want someone to tell me at what point is it? Fine, maybe you were a victim at first, yada, yada, even though I don't really stand by that. But let's let's play along, okay? At what point does it become, it's no longer them that's just an inhumane, heinous, malicious, vindictive person. And maybe at some point you're calling for being treated like dirt. Because at what point is it no longer that and it's now your fault? I would really like someone to clarify this for me. At what point are you at fault? Because I, I again, I've said this a million times before, but I do not stand by... Life just happens to you. And I don't appreciate anyone who comes with that mentality. I don't, I won't even have a conversation with you. Life doesn't just happen to you. You accept the love you think you <laughs> deserve. So I, listen, I know it's I lame, it but it's, it's true. What was it? Perks of being a wallflower? Yeah. You accept the love you think you deserve. Right? Yeah. As cliche as it is, you do accept the love you think you deserve. And it's quite unfortunate to see that most people think they don't really deserve much and and see it through their actions hear it through their words watch it through their movements it's so easy to for example say oh i'm a 10 out of 10 i deserve everything but then watch how they treat themselves first and foremost watch what they allow themselves to go through watch how they allow other people to walk all over them like dirt more importantly watch what they think when they are on their own they have the most negative self-destructive thoughts so yeah, most people, unfortunately, think they don't really deserve much. And you know what? I might go ahead and say they might be right. Only because maybe take it as a sign. Maybe take it as your mind pushing you to cause change. You know what I mean? So if you're starting to feel that lowness, that depression, that I don't deserve much, maybe that's God sending you a sign that something about your life needs to change. Be it the thoughts that you have, the company that you keep, the um, even as down to down to the music that you listen to. So rather than succumb to it, I take it as a sign that something needs to be altered. And that's a great opportunity to maybe discover a whole new world. It's scary, can be terrifying, but nothing is more exciting, especially if you do it right. So yeah, 100% we accept the love we think we deserve, but that can change. I love that. Thanks, Bibes. Thanks, Bibes. <laughs> you know, um, you did mention something earlier. Is, you know, when you, let's say our girlfriend had a fight with her guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, half off. Okay. Come on, man. Come on. This I'm is good. I'm here. I'm here. Stay with me. Stay with me. So, I'm with you. <laughs> so our friend has a fight with a guy, right? Most of the times, it's always the girl victimizing herself blaming herself not taking accountability and most importantly what i notice is that a lot of girls do not tell the full story <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just for me i've i'm not gonna drop names i'm not gonna drop in scenarios but i've noticed this a lot a thousand percent and i just don't like it like Leila. I tell you everything, right? Yeah, you, you do. know, I do. If and I know when you're telling me a full story because you take a second. I always and do. You do. Because you take a second and you're like, Leila, I'm going to be fully honest with you. The second I hear that sentence, I'm literally like, okay, get ready. There's a story coming. <laughs> the second you say that sentence, I'm like, yeah, she's about to like drop a whole story on me, like a full one. Yeah, I know. I can tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah. But. <laughs> No, you know what? I honestly, in the past, I used to always think I'm the victim. I had a huge 
victim mentality of yeah. oh it's not fair oh my parents are so hard on me same. oh my this and that and that and that yeah, whatever yeah, but honestly like the minute i stopped <laughs> and started taking accountability <laughs> you're just good life is better yeah it's good yeah <laughs> why, i agree why are you laughing because because it blows my mind that people really want to hold on to this concept of it's it just happened to me and I'm the victim and it's out of my control and I did everything I could. I The second someone tells me I did everything I could and it didn't work out for them and they're sulking, I immediately will bet my life, I will die on that hill, that they did not do everything they could. I'll tell you why. Because number one, they would have either succeeded or number two, they wouldn't be having a negative mentality. They would have succeeded in the sense that if you did everything you could, you would have gotten to where you needed to get. It would have happened. There is no, if you tell me you did the best that you could, there is no two ways about it. It would have happened. Now, sometimes you genuinely do the best you can, but you don't get there. But what do I, we always say, something better comes along or you're in the mentality of that didn't work out but i did the best i can something better is going to come along because guess what something better always comes along bro we are a walking testimony of god's grace and mercy on us so that's why i'm just i'm over it yeah i might be a little harsh about it you want to call me out of touch i don't i genuinely don't care um it's i'm sick of it i'm sick of people wasting their years just with such a negative soul crushing mentality so yeah if this and you know what i've gotten enough dms of people saying it's been a wake-up call that i'll keep going because it's those select few that really get it i'm like yeah you're going places i mean uh i mean you know what's happened <laughs> july for some reason was a very very odd month i'm not even gonna say it's the worst month or it's no, such it's a not bad the worst month, i've definitely but- been through like like, you know what's happened with me, and there's yeah. some things that happened with you. Obviously, I won't mention it. But with what's happened to me, uh, well, let me just drop one. <laughs> <laughs> Are my, we going to relive it on camera? <laughs> no, 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 not everything. Uh, my husband broke <laughs> both of his arms. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing. But it's... <laughs> Habibi, your head on. He looks so cute with his little... So, I mean, okay. Hat. So, obviously, my husband um, had an accident. Alhamdulillah, he's okay. He doesn't require surgery, but... He sent me the video. He did. He didn't. Awesome. I'm telling him to send me the video. <laughs> I'll show you, but I won't send you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, along... <laughs> quite a... I mean, not the greatest things happened in July. But, honestly, like, you know what's cool is that I don't let it get me down. Like, you know, I move no, for forward. Sure. And for sure. that's something, obviously, by you are the company you keep, right? At the end of the day. I've honestly kind of learned how to kind of compose myself during these situations. Yeah. If I'm going to allow myself to let every little thing that happened in July really, like, take over me, girl, like, what would happen? I had this conversation with my mother when I was in Jordan. So my brother had traveled, and obviously she got really emotional because... Arab moms and their favorite sons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. And she just looked at me she, and she asked me, Zimu safar, when Zimu traveled, did you not feel anything? Like, are you not sad? And I just looked at her and I was like, no. But you also had a conversation with my dad when you asked him, do you miss Layla? And he told you, I never miss anyone. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it's not weird. Okay, I it get is it. Weird. <laughs> it sounds weird. It sounds weird. But we have this thing where I get it. God is the center of everything. So my dad has this thing where I don't have to physically be with you. I'm always with you. And believe it or not, I feel my dad around me all the time. I feel my brother with me all the time. I feel my mom. I feel my sister. To the point where if one of them feels some type of way on a different continent, I literally get this, this spidey sense. And I'll pick up the phone. I'll be like, what's wrong? And my mom will be like, Bint Halal, how did you even know? You called me at the perfect time. And this is why I, I really focus on this spiritual connection and opening. Because once it opens, you see things in a different way. You feel things in a different way. Your connections with your family and people are on a different level and frequency. When God is at the center of everything, there is a tether. There is a oneness and you are connected. So... I could easily freak out. (laughs) 
I could easily freak yeah, out. There course. are a million reasons. But July tested the fiber of my being. Uh, both of us. The fiber both of my of being. Both of us. It has tested both of us. And I didn't freak out. I was like, yeah, we're going to be fine. I... Honestly, I'll tell you something. Um, obviously, yeah, you know, with, with what everything happened in July, I did have four days where I was just... Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was, it was just... I don't want... You know what? Now that I look back at it, it's so stupid. But I'm not going to lie. I, I felt it with you. Like, when you were down, I... Yeah, it messed I, me up. Yeah, <laughs> TMI. But honest, <laughs> honestly, you know what? I'm not even afraid to share this, but... I was so down to the point that I actually didn't leave home for five days. I remember. Um, my husband went out. He, I told him, I'm like, please go. Like, do not, like, do not sit and yeah, like with me. you know, yeah. like you do you. Yeah. Go watch your football games. Like, don't worry about me. I just, I don't want to go out and bring everyone down with the way I'm feeling. Yeah. So let me have my space. I've done so. <laughs> TMI, but like. I just, uh, you know, I, I didn't put makeup on. I didn't look at myself in the mirror. But then, like, honestly, I just got back up. And I'm like, you know what? This is the one thing. If people actually have this mindset, like, life will be beautiful. Yeah. Is that everything is for a reason. And whether we choose to believe it or not, whatever doesn't happen to you, wallah, I feel like there's something much more beautiful that's waiting at the end. I agree, bro. Listen, when and I you... and I was like, I was cool. I got back up, you know, like I I got back to my routine, <laughs> but like it was it was tough. Yeah, like <laughs> it was. I'm laughing because I'm just remembering how it was. It was oh, literally horrid, horrid. the second I'm taking off to go to horrid, Jordan. Horrid, it was horrid. just horrid. insane. Oh, I I cursed. Oh my god, so sorry, so it's sorry. Okay. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But um, it's horrible. No, I I will say this though, truly, especially because I traveled to Jordan and to Santorini. Alhamdulillah, blessed and luckier than most and, and, and truly attempted to stay present in every second of every day. But when I tell you July tested mm. the fibers of my being and I could have, I, honestly, I could have easily freaked out and I even watched myself. It was almost like an out of body experience and I was like, wow, I could totally panic and get depressed or freak out right now, but not even a singular cell in my body wanted to. Because after 29 years, I am a walking testimony of how God has always made it work out for me, always. So yeah, it may seem bigger than life and heavy and, and intense and almost too much to handle. And sometimes I used to tell my best friend, sometimes I feel like the water's right here and it's just my nostrils and I can barely breathe and sometimes I'll, have water be splashed and I'll choke, you know, but a walking testimony of God's grace and mercy. So I actually laughed and I was like, this is God processing me. This is God getting me ready for everything. I know he's about to deliver and more. And honestly, that's why I'm laughing because it was just, it's so humbling and it's so refreshing. And, and I can't help but say, Alhamdulillah, that God has allowed me to think this way. I can't imagine succumbing to the darkness and the heaviness. Oh, and I the did depression. for four days. Honestly, it was like weird. I can't imagine. <laughs> it's a, it's weird when you do. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like no, but I don't get sad. I trust God. My default setting is trusting God. It's not getting sad and succumbing to to the heaviness of it. So I like that. I like that we've reached the point where it's my default setting is Alhamdulillah, and we're gonna keep it moving. It's gonna work out. You know what's so crazy? I love it. Tell me. So to be honest with you, I've I've had this mentality of. I've had this mentality of, I can't, I will allow myself to feel, but I need to snap out of it. I need to move on and I need to accept that. That's like Rumi's guest house poem. You yeah, 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 I yeah, do. Where these feelings are a guest. You let them come in, sweep, clean, whatever of they course. need. And you watch them and you allow them to leave when they need to leave. So I've been like this for the past five years. And honestly, like, alhamdulillah, like, I'm good and I'm happy this way. But one of, one of my best friends, um, she's a psychologist. And she actually told me that this mentality or the way I am or the way I deal with conflict or like problems or issues is, is, is wrong. Mm. I should allow myself to feel, I should succumb into the grief, into the darkness. Oof. It's not normal. It's not normal that I have the ability to be like, okay, this sucks. I am down. But you know what? It is not, 
I hate that. But this is what is happening. If you say it's okay not to be okay, I'm going to lose my mind. I hate you that know, sentence. You know that I'm not okay with that. I hate, we hate that sentence. But apparently, and I don't like to use yeah. the word hate, but I hate that sentence. I don't I don't like it either. It's it's not okay to not be okay. <laughs> it's such not. A dumb, such a stupid sentence. It's not. Who came up with the sentence? Jail time. Pinterest. Jail time. <laughs> But yeah, apparently our mindset, according to some psychiatr- psych- psychologist, is wrong. Because we're not confronting it. We're pushing it in the back burner. Yeah. <laughs> I... Okay, you if know... If you've seen this podcast long enough, you know that I... Number one, I'm very iffy about psychologists. I'm even more iffy about psychiatrists. And um, okay, then she can succumb to her every little women emotion and let me know how that works out for her chaos she can do that turmoil let me know how that works out chaotic it's insane it's madness i i don't understand how we've reached the point of it's absolutely normal and fine to succumb to every little emotion and validate every feeling but when i tell you apply the poem guest house by Rumi, where it's literally almost like an out of body experience. You are very aware and you recognize the emotions that you are being faced with and that are penetrating your mind right now and your soul. And you watch them and you allow them to take place and you know why they're here and they do what they need to do. And then they, you let them go with love and great gratitude and, and all the acceptance and you keep it moving. And for some reason, that's not okay. That's suppressing or denying whatever you want to call it but it, for me to sit and sulk and then tell you oh i need to start popping pills just to be a semi-functioning human that's that's great you're on the right track madness this yeah. is i swear to god we're in alice in wonderland's rabbit hole this is this is modern day society i have one more question that will honestly ruffle some feathers oh, okay i came across um, a video of a uh, I'm just trying to think how to put this so I came across a video of a psychologist uh, obviously interviewing with a host okay. and the psychologist basically said that depression does not exist our brain our functions doesn't know how to process depression. does not process depression so what do you think on that I, it's not real. You and I talk about this. We don't believe in depression, right? Because I believe in having depressive thoughts. I believe in sad thoughts. I believe in sadness. And to a certain extent, everyone has a certain degree of sadness that is in their soul. It's a must in this dunya because we're not meant to be in this dunya. It's a train stop until we get to where we need to get, inshallah. So this heaviness and this sadness, yes. But the reason why I don't like depression is because a sad thought can come and maybe it lingers a little too long. And then if I start telling myself, oh, what if I have depression? What if I'm depressed? Then I'm a firm believer in the words you speak become the house you live in. My Prophet ﷺ says this. My Quran says this. What we say and what we think becomes our reality. So this is what I believe and I am living proof. My life is living proof of that. Do you know what I mean? So if I have a sad thought and I sit there and start telling myself I'm depressed, what am I going to be? depressed but if i have a sad thought and i sit and tell myself it's okay something tough happened but you know what god's with me i have the tools i have the good graces i have the background the experience to get through this and come out stronger then what is what is going to happen i will come out on top i will come out grateful for god for the experience i will come out having oozed all the knowledge and, and, and genuine essence out of it that will better my soul. And I will say thank you. And I will leave it where it belongs in the past. And I will move on as a better version of myself. So no, I don't believe in depression. Why would I? It's, a, it's disrespectful towards God if I ever tell you I'm depressed. Bro, I know where I came from. I know where I came from, bro. I, I remember when like, ugh. When I didn't have enough to buy a pack of noodles, when my mom was crying because of how hungry she was, when I lived in a cockroach bed bug infested house. So it's very easy for people to get on my comments and say, oh, you come from privilege. You have no idea what I've been through. And still I will sit here and tell you there is no way in hell I will ever tell you I'm depressed. It's just never gonna happen, ever. And by the way, you could take everything away from me and I'd still tell you I'm not depressed. If I have God's favor, that's all I need. That's it, that's all I need. 
even my mom was telling me the other day something about my brother. And I was like, but mom, I believe that men need to go through it. Let him. Let him go through the hardest of times. It's hard. He's the love of my life, my brother. He's my younger brother. I'll do anything for him. I'll literally die for him. But if God has declared he needs to be tested with something, then God has declared he needs to be tested with something. Who am I? God knows where he ends up after it. It'll take him where he needs to get. So he sits there and tells me he's depressed. He'd never, never. My, and this is something, by the way, my mom, my brother, my sister, my father, and myself would never tell you we're depressed. It's never a thing. I love that. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. And honestly, people just need to kind of take a second and recognize that they're a walking testimony of God's grace. They really are, no matter what you've been through. And you, I'm sure you've been through some horrible things. But you're here. You have an opportunity. You could do something. Every day, every second you are breathing is an opportunity to take over the world, honestly. As intense as that is, I mean it. You could literally take over the world. Everything is a fingertip away. That was very well said. Thanks, Vibes. There was mm. something I wanted to say, but I can't remember it. You were talking about something, and then it crossed my mind, and then it went away. So maybe for next time. Maybe but for next time. Yeah, I can't remember it right now. <laughs> are we done? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay, we are. So thank you, guys. Thank I don't know why I'm looking at the camera. Um, thanks, Foofs. This was nice. Thank you, guys. Honestly, I, I, it's, it's, been, it's been almost four weeks. Almost, I, yeah. Honestly, I enjoyed this. Yeah, honestly. I can, I can feel the energy, the rejuvenation. Rejuvenation. Yeah, I like it. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> I'm really happy to be back. But we didn't start the episode with assalamu alaikum, but we'll end it with that. Inshallah, next episode, Dad will be back. Thank you, everyone, for the past four weeks. It's been phenomenal. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Assalamu alaikum. You have to say wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>